Hi, I'm Hazel. It is almost Saturday, so it's time to sit down and catch up with a brand new vlog. Uh, so this week I went ahead with that PC reformat that I talked about um, in my like midweek uh, computer issues update. So I completely reformatted my PC and fingers crossed, knock on wood, that appears to have fixed my problem. It has not had an unexpected shutdown since I reformatted it. And oddly enough, the reformat was the smoothest thing that I've actually tried so far. You always think of reformatting your computer as like this super nuclear, last ditch, pain in the butt thing to do that nobody really wants to have to do because you know there's going to be something you forgot to back up or something you forgot to deactivate or some software key that's not that's only valid once and you know there's going to be something that goes horribly wrong and nothing did i backed everything up i i transferred all my licenses it worked great so everything's almost almost peachy now the only thing that has not been smooth since the reformat is uh, my adobe premiere my editor my video editor software hates me now Super mad. Um, it's something, something must have been making it happy in my old installation of Windows that is no longer there. And I just can't figure out what it needs because it's not giving me an error message when it shuts down unexpectedly. And uh, I've installed Codex. I downloaded QuickTime for it. I've updated it a million times. I bought the new version of it. I just, I, I don't know what it needs. And I spent, I wasted a lot of time try, trying to troubleshoot that over the last couple of days. So I might end up having to actually get a second video editing software, just like a completely different one. Um, as a backup for when Premiere decides it's not working because I mostly got it working yesterday, but I don't know how and I don't trust it to not just start crashing again. So, <sighs> yeah, um, hopefully, hopefully those problems smooth out just because I've been really, really stressed about all this in the last week or two. And I just want, I just want, I just want everything to work. So the good news is my computer's no longer crashing. So I probably won't have to spend any more money on that, which is a huge relief. And now I just need my editor to figure its stuff out. And then we're just going to be like a plus perfect, perfect life goals, dreams, anyways. Um, so what else has happened this week? My guild got quite a few more legendaries to drop in WoW. None of them for me, of course. Uh, that would just be too nice. But um, we last night in raid, actually, we had two different people in our raid just get legendaries during raid off the bosses. And then we had another person get another one right at the end of it. And I believe a fourth person had one earlier in the day just from like doing world quests or a heroic dungeon or something. So lots of people have legendaries now. I am not among them and I am fairly salty about that. But that's just, them's just the breaks. That's just RNG and how it works. So my day will eventually come. Uh, I just got to keep doing my, doing my emissary and, you know, daily heroic and then showing up to raid and extra heroics whenever I have time and maybe some mythic plus and it'll happen eventually. It's got to one day. <laughs> Um, also, related to raiding, um, we, oh, we killed, uh, heroic dragons? I think we killed heroic dragons this week, so we're now Nathendra, Ursok, dragons, Ibo. We're four of seven, um, heroic, so we're a little more than halfway through progressing through the raid, which is kind of cool. But I found out I had been reading my Shadow Priest stat priority incorrectly, and I felt so dumb when I figured this out. But I had, for, I had thought that crit was my best stat. And I have been, up until like yesterday, gearing crit. I have been looking at two pieces of equal gear and taking the one with more crit because I was like, crit is my jam. And you know why I thought that was because I looked up my stat priorities on How To Priest. And How To Priest has their stat priorities listed. And it, this is pre hotfix but they have them listed for a couple of different builds. And in every single one of those builds, crit was on top of the list, like they had it first in the column. They, they had it first in the, at the top of each list for each stat priority. And for whatever reason, I hadn't read the number next to it. I had just seen it on top and assumed that they had ordered those by stat weight, but they had not. They had just given them a arbitrary order and then the stat weights were listed next to them. So this is really not their fault. This is all on me. I'm just dumb. But I didn't read them properly or if I read them, I completely didn't understand. And crit has never been my best stat. I should have been going haste all this time. So if I have ever at any point told any of you that crit was good for Shadow Priest, I mean, it's not bad, but it's no haste. Uh, haste is quite a bit better. So I got myself set up with Pawn. I input the correct stat weights. I can start getting the right loot now. But oh my gosh, do I feel dumb. That was that was a pretty spectacular uh-oh uh for me. But now I know. And uh, yeah, lesson, lessons learned. Uh, what else? I had a lot of fun watching the EU regional um, WoW tournament. Uh, that was a blast. The casters were great. The, uh, the games were really good. The finals were, like, really butt-clenching, um, I guess you could say. And I'm really excited to watch the North American ones. Um, I believe those are happening on the 9th, so that's gotta be, like, this weekend. Uh, so that'll be, that'll be a lot of fun. I got my Patron of War title, um, which you get when you link your Twitch account. I talked a little bit about that last week. The titles have now gone out for those who did that for the, uh, European ones, and I believe you still have a chance to get that title if you link your Twitch account to your Battle.net account. 
and watch the North American ones, I believe you'll still be able to get that title. It'd be weird if it was just for the European ones. So uh, anybody that's interested in the Patron of War title, make sure you do that. There's a post on Battle.net um, that spells out exactly what you got to do. It's very easy. It takes like two minutes. Um, today, uh, specifically this morning, they released a hotfix to Mythic Dungeon Rewards to increase artifact power gains from higher tier Mythic Plus. So when you're doing, you know, plus six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you're going to be getting a lot more artifact power than doing the initial ones. And they're also making it so when you multi-chest a run, when you, like, three-chest or two-chest a run, say you go and you do a Mythic Plus two and you three-chest it, you will no longer get artifact power from the bonus chest. You only get it from the first one. And I think the reason they're doing this is because they want to incentivize doing the highest tier of Mythic run that you are capable of getting into. Rather than, you get you have all these people with plus 7 and plus 10 and plus 5 stones that aren't doing them because there's no reason why you would want to do that except for a slightly better loot. When you can just go into group finder and find some, some poor person that's a little late to the game that's still got their plus 2 stone. And you can stomp through their dungeon and just get a whole bunch of free artifact power. So they're making it so it's it's more it's more effective to do your plus five and your plus seven and like the highest one you can make it through, um, and and then making it less less of a big deal to have to three chest things. So I think it'll be a little less disappointing if you complete the dungeon within the time limit, but don't do it within forty percent of the time limit. I think it'll be a little bit better. So uh, that'll be nice. And I believe that hotfix has already gone out. I think um, if not, it should be going out very shortly. So. Uh, yeah, um, I actually did my first couple of Mythic Dungeons, um, or Mythic Plus. I don't think I had done very much of it prior to this week, but this week I actually got quite a few more in. Um, at the very end of last week, I maybe on the weekend, I don't remember exactly when I did it, but I cleared a plus seven, and I got a really nice ring for my plus seven chest. I got a Nod Thumb Ring, which actually has a, an on use. It's, it's got a cooldown of its own. Uh, every three minutes, I can pop my random-ass epic ring and get an extra 5% magic damage for 12 seconds, which is pretty good. So, um, so yeah, that worked out really well. And, uh, yeah, Mythic Plus are pretty fun. Uh, they don't look fun to heal. I have been DPSing them whenever humanly possible because healing them looks really stressful. Not only does nobody have any health and you don't really have all that much mana and there's damage coming out everywhere and people are in a hurry, but they're actively running away from you as you're trying to heal. It looks awful. So, uh, yeah, a lot more fun when I'm doing the Shadow Priest thing. Uh, what else? I will be streaming again this afternoon from 3 p.m. Pacific to 5 p.m. Pacific, and that is going to be our weekly time slot, so exactly the same time as last week. I will continue to do that today, and every week for the foreseeable future, should there be any need to change that, I'll, I'll tell you in the vlog, and I'll tell you on the stream, and I'll tell you on Twitter. Um, I understand a lot of people can't make it to that time because time zones are a thing, and there's not going to be any time that's good for everybody. But um, the way we're going to handle that is the VOD from the stream is going to go up tomorrow morning. Um, so the following morning, Saturday mornings, the full VOD, um, unedited, I'm not going to cut anything out, just the full VOD right from the stream is going to go out so that anybody that missed it can at least catch up on what we did, if that is something you want to do. So yeah, um, I'm going to be streaming this afternoon, and I hope to see at least a couple of you there. I'm probably going to be catching up on, um, World Quest. It would be really fun if we could do a bunch of heroic dungeons just to try and maybe get a legendary. How fun would that be if we got a legendary on stream? I just, I want one. All, all the cool kids have one, I want one too. <laughs> Okay, so questions from this week. Uh, Black Rose Thorn Etna, do you think Brewmaster slash Mistweaver can be viable? And the way I'm taking this question is, um, do you think that having, that keeping up with two specs that use a different primary stat and or are different roles is viable? Like, you could, you could like, in the past, um, like in, in Wad, or not Wad, but in um, Cataclysm and Mr. Pandaria, it would very unlikely for somebody to dual spec as a um, like as a guardian druid and a rester druid because you would need completely different gear. You would need new int gear. You would need healing trinkets. You would need a healing weapon. You would need probably to gem and enchant differently. It was just unreasonable. Um, whereas now, I think in Legion, so much switches between the specs. Of course, your primary stat on every piece of gear that has primary stat will switch over. Um, pieces of gear that do not switch over like that no longer have primary stats. So, like, your jewelry, your rings, and your neck are going to be just, um, those are going to be just off stats, uh, secondary stats, so there's no need to, for those to be switching. And then, of course, your artifact weapon, you're just going to have one of those, and if you keep at least 13 points in your off-spec artifact weapon, then it's going to be, at the very least, usable for normals, at least. So, I do think it's viable to maintain two specs of different different primary stat. I don't think there's anything really holding you back from that anymore. You're not going to be optimal in both of them, um, at least until you build up two gear sets because they may have different stat priorities. 
But I do think you can main one and have a solid off spec that you can then switch into should you need to, as long as you're keeping at least 13 points in your second artifact, which is very easy to do, and uh, and you get and you pick up an extra set of trinkets. I don't think there's anything really holding anybody back from dual specking different roles, as opposed to dual specking um, the same role. Like it's it's just as easy to be a brewmaster slash misweaver monk as it is to be a fire slash arcane mage, save for needing an extra set of trinkets. That's the only thing you're really gonna need. So, uh, yeah, I think you can do it, uh, but you should definitely pick one to focus on and make sure that you're optimizing for that one and uh, see how it goes from there. I'm doing kind of a similar thing. I'm set up for Shadow, and I'm geared for Shadow, or at least I thought I was back when I thought Shadow needed crit. But um, I'm set up for Shadow, but last night my guild had a couple of healers missing because uh, they just had different commitments that night. Uh, so my guild had me switch over to Holy to um, for a couple fights on, on normal, normal clear just because we needed a healer. And that's totally fine. I've got 13 points in my healing artifact. My gear is not amazing for healing, but with the, my item level, it's I can totally handle filling that healer spot should they need me to. So it's pretty easy to, to handle that. Uh, Corzo says, hey, Hazel, have you finished the Broken Isle Pathfinder Part 1 achievement yet? No. Um, I need to. I need to finish that. So there's actually two zones that I randomly haven't finished exploring yet. At some point in my life doing world quests, I haven't gone to all the areas of those two different places. I don't know how. Um, and then I have not finished Good Suramaritan because I'm just not done with Suramar. Um, there's more I need to do from that. So once I finish Suramar, it should be pretty quick to wrap up. Um, I've done everything else. Uh, I did the, I did the, I'm not even sure if you needed to, but I did Loremaster from each of the four zones. But, um, yeah, I need to finish, I need to finish Suramar, which I still haven't done because I can't find time. And then, uh, I need to finish exploring two zones, which should be really quick to knock out. So that, so not done yet. But I should be well done before they release part two of that achievement yet, so we'll see. Uh, Kemia asks, can you please do a vlog with your husband? We only saw a glimpse of him. So, uh, probably not. Uh, he's shy and, uh, and choosing to put myself online, both my image and my voice and my opinions, um, onto YouTube and different social media is a very personal decision. I'm exposing myself and losing a lot of my privacy. Um, by doing that, but that's something that I voluntarily choose to do. Uh, his job does not require him to do any of that, so he prefers to keep a lot of his privacy and not go online in that way. So I'm probably not going to be including him in any kind of video unless it's really necessary, just because it's just not something he's opted into, and that's totally fine. Uh, Brandon Harris asks, where did you get that chair? I need that chair. So this chair is it's a, little, a, little, a little damaged. I need to like reupholster the, the pillow on it. This is an Ikea Marcus chair. Um, they make variants that have the leather and they make variants that are just a cloth and they're about $180, $200, I think. Um, and it's a pretty good chair for that price range computer wise. Uh, it's got pretty good back support. It's fairly comfortable. I don't really like it much for me just because for whatever reason, it doesn't complement the way I sit very often. And I tend to get if I have my hair up, because it's so tall in the back, and because of the way the pillow is forward a little bit, if I have my hair up in the back, my head gets kind of pushed forward, and it's really hard on my neck. So, um, you can get the chair at Ikea. It's called a Marcus. Um, they're very popular as computer chairs, but um, make sure you, you test it at the store a little bit, or maybe visit somebody that has one if you know somebody, just to see if you like it first, because it's not for everybody. Um, I'm considering at some point um, in the very far future when I have some extra income to put into my setup here, I would like to switch to a more comfortable chair, maybe a DX Racer or something like that. Um, just some kind, some style of chair that might work better for me because this one's not always super comfy and I spend a lot of time in it. Uh, the Hobbitist asks, I'm just returning to the game and I have a chance to skip to level 100. Should I do that or is it better to level up the old fashioned way with questing and dungeons? And if I do, will it hurt my ability to play well at max level if I want to Raider Arena? So if you're returning to the game, it kind of depends on how long you've been gone. If you only quit in like Missa Pandaria, you could probably come back and you probably have a good idea of what class you want to play. You could just boost that and get right back into business. But if it's been a long time since you've played, um, I recommend holding on to the boost and leveling normally through questing and dungeons because what might happen is you might level normally and find out that maybe there's a different class that you would rather play and then you have your boost left over to do that as opposed to you boost a thing that you think you want to play and then you're playing it at max level and you don't like it that much after having spent some time with it um, and, and then you're, you're, then you have to start all over again. So I do think it's better to level the old fashioned way. It doesn't take very long now, particularly if you have any heirlooms, but even without them, it doesn't take too long. 
Uh, and that'll familiar, familiarize yourself enough with the class fantasy and the concept of how the class works, basically, that you should have a good idea of what you want to play. Um, and you're not, you don't have this big wall of different abilities hitting you um, right at level 110 that might, like, I don't think it's really going to be hard to get into Raider Arena if you just boost, but it will be a lot easier if you learn things one step at a time while leveling. And it's not going to set you back in time that much, and you're going to have a better feel of what you want to play when you've leveled the old-fashioned ways. Uh, and Slingstone wants to know, Hazel, what server and faction are you on? I am on Lightbringer. I play on Alliance. Um, but as sweet as it is that a lot of you um, want to give me stuff, I definitely don't need any in-game gifts. I more or less keep up with my own consumables. Um, I do need to do some herbalism on my druid to try and get some pots for raid because pots are expensive right now, man. But, uh, yeah, I like alliance. As you can tell, I'm wearing one of my alliance shirts right now. So that has been my week. If any of you have any questions that you would like answered on a vlog, just leave them as comments on the most recent vlog. Uh, cross your fingers for my computer. I'm not completely trusting it yet because it's only been a couple of days, but I really hope it's okay. And I just hope I get my editing software smoothed out so I can get back to making some cool videos. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye!